This is the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit, the most expensive aircraft in the world. It costs an astounding $2 billion a unit, including spare parts. The B-2 Spirit's construction program is one of the most complex in history, costing just over $45 billion, almost twice as much as the Apollo program, which aimed to take man to the moon. But beyond its atypical format, have you noticed anything different about it? The B-2 Spirit doesn't have a fuselage or tail stabilizer, which are usually found on most planes. As physics teaches us, without a tail stabilizer, a normal plane cannot fly. There are two major examples of accidents involving the total loss of this component. One example is the American Airlines Flight 587, where due to the pilot's excessive and repeated movements, the tail stabilizer ended up separating from the aircraft, causing it to quickly dive towards the ground. Another example is Japan Airlines Flight 123, where due to a maintenance error, had a decompression event at the rear section, and that took a large part of the tail stabilizer with it. The aircraft became extremely uncontrollable, and despite the pilot's efforts, it ended up colliding with a mountain. But as we can see, the B-2 Spirit flies perfectly, even without a tail stabilizer. So, how did its designers achieve this? But first, why does the B-2 bomber even exist? In the 1960s, thanks to the extremely complex work related to the physics of radar waves proposed by Soviet physicist and mathematician Pyotr Ufimsev, concepts such as the finite cylinder with flat bases, finite cone, finite paraboloid, spherical segment, and the finite thin wire were very well explored, mainly with applications aimed at the military area, especially for stealth. His work showed that large objects like a Boeing 737 or even a Boeing 747 could theoretically appear on the most advanced radar screens as much smaller objects like a small bird or even an insect. This was proven with the top secret Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk, a 20 meter plane weighing just over 13 tons, but with a radar cross section of only 0.01 square feet. In other words, it appears on radar screens the size of a small bird, even though it's a 65 feet plane. Following the same principles, the B-2 Spirit was designed, but the B-2 Spirit was being designed to be the main bomber of the United States, so it had to be a much larger and more capable bomber. And not only that, it also had to be much more invisible than the F-117. How much invisible, you ask? Well, it should appear as the size of an insect on the world's most advanced radar screens. This forced the engineers at Northrop Grumman to choose the flying wing design, a much more subtle and discreet design where the aircraft's fuselage is a natural continuation of the wings and there are no tail stabilizers, as these surfaces greatly increase the visibility of the aircraft to radars. But this proved to be an extremely complex task and created a dozen other problems, among which the main one is that the aircraft would be highly and terribly unstable during flight. Tail stabilizers are an extremely important piece for the stability of any aircraft, being present from fighter jets and private jets to commercial passenger transport planes. But then, how did the engineers manage to make the B-2 Spirit perfectly stable even without tail stabilizers? The answer to this question is found at the rear of the tips of both wings. If we look closely during flight, we can see that there are surfaces that are constantly semi-open throughout the flight. These surfaces are called split rudders, and they are responsible for ensuring the stability of the B-2 during flight. But to understand how they really work, we first need to understand how the stabilization of a conventional plane occurs. In a conventional plane, there are three sets of wings, starting with the main ones, which are also the largest and are located in the center of the plane. These, in addition to ensuring the lift that keeps a plane flying, also carry most of the weight of the entire plane while airborne. With the action of the ailerons, the plane can make roll movements. But let's say that the nose was heavier in relation to the tail. This tendency could not be nullified, since the wings in the center cannot generate any force to counteract this tendency. That's where the rear wings, also called horizontal stabilizers, come in. These wings, combined with the action of the elevators, which are control surfaces located at the rear of each horizontal stabilizer, allows the plane to make a pitch movement, that is, to move the nose up and down. But even so, the plane is still unstable on the vertical axis. If a sidewind were to hit the aircraft, it would have a tendency to skid or yaw. 
That's where the vertical stabilizer comes in, which is the one that stands upright on the tail. It stabilizes the plane on the vertical axis and prevents it from skidding sideways when hit by a side wind. But since the B2 Spirit doesn't have a vertical stabilizer, it should naturally have a tendency to yaw or skid to either side. To avoid this, the B2 Spirit is based on a principle called differential drag. The drag generated by one of the wings can be increased or reduced to keep the plane stabilized. In case dozens of dedicated computers and systems identify that the plane is unbalancing to either side, the component that is responsible for performing this work are the split rudders, which are located at the tips of each wing. These split rudders are a set of two surfaces, one that opens upwards and the other downwards, and can reach a maximum angle close to 90 degrees. They are the most critical and important piece of the B-2 Spirit in terms of safety and stability during flight, because without them, the B-2 would be pretty much impossible to fly. They work in the following way. As soon as the computers detect that the B-2 Spirit is unbalancing, for example, with a tendency to yaw to the right, the computers immediately open the split rudders on the left wing, increasing the drag produced on that wing in relation to the other wing, which has its split rudders almost closed, bringing the plane back to its balance. And if the plane has a tendency to yaw to the left, the computers immediately open the split rudders on the right wing, increasing its drag and bringing the plane back to its balance. This is done completely autonomously, thousands of times during the flight, so much so that the pilots don't even notice that these corrections are occurring. During takeoffs and landings, these split rudders play an even more important role due to the low speed of the aircraft and the low airflow over the wings. At these times, they must be much more open to generate enough drag to keep the aircraft stable. After touchdown, they are fully opened, functioning as aerodynamic brakes, just like spoilers on normal airplanes. But since the B-2 Spirit is an extremely advanced aircraft, there is a second system that works in conjunction with the split rudders. It follows basically the same principle, but using the power of its four engines. So if the B-2 starts to yaw to the right, the engines on the right are decelerated to a lower power than those on the left, helping to bring the plane back to its balance. This system is also used during turns, following the same principle. This system plays a crucial role during the B-2 Spirit's missions, as the opening of the split rudders greatly increases the visibility of the B-2 to radars. That's why when the B-2 Spirit is on a mission, the action of the split rudders is limited, with the maximum opening angle greatly reduced. But how does the B-2 Spirit make pitch and roll movements? The B-2 relies on what are called elevons, a mix of elevators and ailerons. There are six elevons on the B-2 Spirit, three on each wing, but from what everything indicates, only the elevons closest to the center of the plane on each wing are used in tight turns. For example, as the plane turns to the right, the right elevon angles up, while the one on the left angles down. This system and the split rudders complement each other and act together at the exact moment when the turn is recommended. The elevon lifts, and at the same time the split rudders on the same wing open, helping in this rotation of the plane during the turn. This while probably the engines on the left are decelerated a little in relation to those on the right. These systems are so incredible, so complex, work so well, and play such a critical role for the flight of the B-2 that if they were to stop working in mid-flight, it would cause a catastrophic instability of the B-2 spirit that would take the plane down. We've only scratched the surface of everything there's to talk about the B-2 spirit because a lot of it is not public knowledge or is highly secret. However, if you have any cool information about the B-2 bomber, share it with us and our viewers in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of content, consider becoming a channel member. Starting at only $2.99 a month, you can get early and ad-free video access, exclusive wallpapers, and a lot more benefits on higher categories. Choose the member category by clicking the join button below or via our Patreon. Thank you for watching.